Sia is a, uh, you have a fascinating story, if I may say so. I'm very anxious to speak to you. When I first heard the song Diamonds in the Sky, you know I love that song. It's so, that was great That's hearing it. you liked it. Oh my, me. I loved it. And when I found out that you wrote it, the reason, I'm always interested in people who write songs for other people. I would find that, first of all, you have a beautiful singing voice. There's no reason why you would write these songs <laughs> for other people. <laughs> But then when I read your story and stuff, it was like, wow. It's money. I get it, yeah. <laughs> no, it wasn't money, though. It was also anxiety. Dad was putting together an album, and you said, Dad, I'll perform on that album, which would be great <laughs> for him. And he said, no, you're trying to hog my, my big chance, right? He goes, this is exactly how it went down. We're in the car. He's talking about his album. He's like, I'm making an album. Oh, it's like this. It's honky tonk. It's this, that, and the other. And I was like, well, Dad, if you want me to sing harmonies or anything on it, just let me know. And he turned around, he looked at me, and he said, nah, it's my album, and you're not on it. Wow. <laughs> But it was kind of the reason I, I tell that story is because there's a part of it that's comedy. To is me. that like, you, you laugh when you tell that story, but it, it, don't you think that's hiding the pain of that story in a sense? I mean, it really is nothing funny about it, don't I mean, you think? Uh, is it really? I funny? do find him amusing. There was he had like a, two very unique personalities, and one was called Phil, and one was called Stan. Phil was like the best dad ever. So when Stan came around, the stuff got st scary. It was anguish. Did you start to feel bad about yourself because your father would be the Stan character and, and just uh, belittle you? Well, he never belittled, belittled me. He, it was never about me. It was just, it was an energy that came in the room that was uh, intimidating. Uh, <laughs> for those who don't know, do you ever can't, do you, are you a religious woman? Uh, I believe in a higher power and it's called Whatever Dude and there's a queer surfing Santa that's a bit like my grandpa, so yes. So God is Whatever Dude, a queer surfing Santa? Yeah, yeah. And he is the one, he or she is the one that... It's a dude, weirdly. And do you believe from this higher power, diamonds, the words diamonds in the sky just sort of... Because you don't know where that comes from. It must be maddening, you it's, just don't know. But, but, but the song is written so fast. The best songs are always written so quickly, aren't they? I think so. I like to think so. <laughs> do you have to be in some weird state to come up with these things? Like, do you have to like be in the right room? Do you have to... Yeah. Why did you only have 20 minutes to write that song? Well, it was the end of a session. I'd already written two other songs, probably. And so it was the end of the session. I was on my way to the airport to go somewhere. And clearly, when you write a song, you have the music in your head first, right? No. Here's how it works. Either people play me... Like, in this case, here, because they've given you something to play, right? Yes. Okay, so in this case... I go in with Stargate and they play me tracks and I've never heard them before and when they play me the track they press play and I press record on my little garage band thingy mm -hmm. and I just intuit where the track's going to go. I'm singing a melody and I'm hoping it goes where I think it's going to go. It's always the same because I love you keep going and it's like it's the only way out is through if you feel it's suicidal, you know, if you're feeling the isolation. You know, do anything you can to connect with your community or any community. There are all sorts of meetings. If his mic is on, Greg it is works on. with me. Go closer, yeah. Greg. Tell him because we work together all the time, so he has great insight into how it works. Yeah, I mean, she's always in that state of mind. It's just, it's crazy. I've never worked with anyone really like that. She's just always, there's no like analytical part of songwriting. It's just like from the brain out of her mouth, and then it just, it just goes and happens quickly. Like.
Well, specifically with Diamonds in the Sky, because that's the first song we're talking about. The Diamonds in the Sky, when you heard Rihanna's version of it, mm -hmm. uh, you were at first confused because you thought it was you. I did. It was insane. Because she sings it the exact way it you did the track. It was amazing. Is it in the limousine? I think that's what happened. I think you were going into the Grammys, and I was really excited because I'd never been in a limousine. And I was 12, and I remember I was like, I'll stay here with the candy. And it had a little television in it, so I could watch the Grammys while I was in the te in the car. I just parked outside the Grammys. <laughs> my, brother's, my brother's music, so I always, I always said, you know, I think it's fascinating. Since I put my pants on, it's <laughs> So now it's just carrots. Just kidding. If you're, just your pants. Bipolar. Yeah. Uh, you, I, you know, I you're diagnosed. Probably the drinking or the drugs or whatever you did. Uh, it was probably you trying to self-medicate, self right? Yeah, definitely. You were trying to straighten yourself out. I was just so labile. I was just, I was constantly looking for something just to feel like some sense of equilibrium. Were you relieved when you found out you were bipolar in the sense that you went, oh, so this is what's going on? No, I was relieved when I found out I was an alcoholic. <laughs> right, you didn't know. I had no idea. Right. Yeah, absolutely you, What do you no mean, idea. you thought you had... Fans, and I know a lot, I see a lot of your comments, a lot of your fans are watching. Uh, do you have a message for them? Because I know it must be very difficult to not be, you know, out there. Oh, I love them. I love them. Keep going. Just, yeah, you know, it's the only way out is through. You had it under control. I thought I was relaxing. Right. Right, like pill popping and drinking. What do they I have? I think I'm relaxing watching like The Real Housewives like for six months without leaving the house, like in one sofa chair. Like, is that is that what uh, ordering drugs in? Is that why you became a songwriter for other people because yes. you were bipolar and because you were so uncomfortable on stage? No, I became a pop songwriter uh, because I was uncomfortable, like touring, getting famous. I didn't like the things that were coming with singing. Is it tough sometimes walking the line where, when you need someone like Maddie who personally you want to protect, but performance wise you need to push them to a space where they're going to give you that little bit extra? Well, I never have had to push her, never once, but yes, I agree with you that, um, you know, I, I had a real come to Jesus like shortly after Chandelier, and I was like, oh my God, I've just exploited this child because I didn't want to be famous. I put her in the role as avatar or muse and now i've given her exactly what i was trying to avoid how now i owe her um big time and so that's why i've dedicated yeah i mean so that's why i've kind of dedicated my life to you know i i i have her i cover her protection and i um and i I mean, I talked to her as much as I can. I talked to her and I um, made sure she never got on a jet to see Harvey Weinstein. I'm, you know, I just like, anytime there's been anything questionable, I've been like, don't do it. Come it just popped right out. Diamond I have no idea. Sky. It was just channeled. Booba B, blah blah blah, yeah. diamond in the sky. Yeah, it just came out. Why is it when I go booba B, booba B, it, it never goes any, way. it stays that way. It never goes any further. <laughs> never turns into words. <laughs> that is phenomenal. Isn't it's, that wild? That, that was surprising to me too, actually. What was shocking to you is that Rihanna did it exactly the way you did it. Well, actually, most people do it exactly the way I do it now. Right. But there's a few people that, like, they always keep my backing vocals, mm -hmm. but Beyonce took Pretty Hurts to a different place. And I know that sometimes people will add their own flavor. Y'all 
offered it to Katy Perry. She passed. She didn't, didn't get it. She sent me a text after and she heard it recently and yeah. she said, I'm pretty hurt that you didn't send that to me. And I said to her, check your email. I sent it two and a half years ago. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. So Beyonce hears it and, 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 and other people just kind of held on to it and let it pass. It's funny. And then and then when they hear it, they go, why the hell didn't I record that, right? Well, Rihanna really did want it and she wanted it and she was disappointed. Why and so, Why don't these ladies, when you, now at this point you have so much credibility, as soon as you write something, why don't they just grab it well, up? Well, at that point I didn't have that much credibility. I was still pretty new. I think even about your life, I mean, you, you were so low because of uh, your illness that you almost killed yourself. Yes. Yeah, and, and I mean, and so I think of you as the diamond in the sky, oh. and that you're shining bright now. <laughs> bright? Isn't that it? <laughs> you're so nice. But you're shining bright like a diamond now, and it's so beautiful. <laughs> you're so sweet, I'm crying. <laughs> oh. but, is it, but isn't that the beauty that you didn't kill yourself? I mean, you almost took your own life. I mean, how, how we would have lost out on this diamond in the sky. <laughs> I can't talk because I'm crying. That's good for ratings. <laughs> Thanks idea. for pulling me back there. Yeah, of course. <laughs> no, but but uh, it, it got really bad. I mean, you called a drug dealer and you said, "Listen, give me two of everything. This is it. I'm doing it." That was in six months before I hit bottom. Like that was when I was like, "Oh, this seems like a great idea. Two of everything. Try it." And of course, the the pharmaceutical heroin one. Yeah. So, and six months later, I was like, "Really?" That's when I was so depressed. I wanted to die. Oh man, it's just so. It's well, thank God for twelve step program, right? You know, I just adopted two boys. Police brutality, we can say it. And, and I, just, I just wonder, from your perspective, we, how you feel about things right now? I mean, I'm gonna cry. I'm like, oh, so, it's so sweet, they just put a bunch of tissues in front of me. I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed that it took me to adopt two black sons to really understand what they go through on a daily basis. I'm embarrassed that there are kids bikini pictures up on the Daily Mail. Like when this reality is happening and it's what we should be addressing more than anything else, more than any dumb movie I'm putting out or any song I'm putting out or any music I ever love. Um because that there are things we can do. Like we can actually act and we can actually try and get justice for Breonna Taylor and where's that piece of paper? We can have an effect. We don't have to just feel sad and guilty, you know, and you know, shut up white women and you know, like, Dave Chappelle's my friend, right? Like, and very scared, very scared for my children. I love them so much, you know? Dave Chappelle is my friend, but you know when he said shut up, white women, white women, I was like, I can't, I'm sorry, like, uh, you know, oh, if I say this will my movie flop, if I say this will my album flop, like, I don't give a fuck about that right now, you know, like, I've got these two children who could be shot and killed tomorrow just for being black. Limited attention, limited resources, limited opportunity, it's just limited. That's right, and I don't want to use my limited resources to talk about a movie or music when I can talk about police brutality. As a mother, as a grandmother. <laughs> Amazing. And you're very special. You really are. Thank you. All right, go ahead and cry. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> you're so nice. Do you have children? I do. Yeah, I yes. think you're a good dad. Thank you. I love you.